after puppy ownership went through the roof during the pandemic, charities are reporting an unprecedented rise in inquiries about unwanted dogs. But with many rescue centres already at capacity, there are fears that some abandoned pups may shockingly have to be euthanised unnecessarily. Well, today we're joined by uh, Niall Lester, the co-founder of New Hope Animal Rescue, <laughs> which is dedicated to uh, helping dogs at the risk of being put down. Uh, sorry, I'm totally distracted by the dogs. They're just so <laughs> sweet. We'll also be talking to Dr Scott. Uh, welcome to both of you. Thank you for being here. Hi. Uh, Scott, we'll come to you in a minute. So, well done, by the way. You're wrangling three <laughs> very young dogs here who are so gorgeous. They've um, been very well behind. You've been rescuing animals for 20 years. Yeah. You must have been watching throughout this pandemic going, I know what's coming. This is all very well. Everybody yeah, getting these yeah. dogs, these puppies. It's a puppy boom. But you knew on the end, the flip side of this, this is what was going to happen. Yeah, and I do think we're at the very start of it as well. I mean, I think we've got a good year of this getting worse. I yeah. think this is the very beginning of the issue, mm. to be honest. Um, but yeah, it has... Why then? Why? What, what happened? Well, puppy sales have increased massively. Uh, the figure's 160-something yeah. percent. So puppy sales have spiked, I think, because people have been at home and felt they could manage a dog. But as life returns to normal, people are going back to work, um, problems are arising. And I think we haven't been able to socialise our dogs and treat our dogs the way we normally would. Is it would. behaviour? Yeah. Is it a behaviour? Well, I mean, the, there was a report that uh, a third of new puppy owners had never taken their puppies to the park, um, and a huge proportion had never even left the house. Yeah. So that's that's going to be cause all sorts of behavioural issues, not least, I suppose, separation anxiety when whoever it is that has got that puppy and hasn't thought about the future is going to have to leave the house without the dog. Separation anxiety is a big one and it's quite a difficult problem for people to manage, so we are starting to see separation anxiety pups coming in. Um, and stranger reaction as well, fear of strangers, fear of other dogs, not the correct socialisation. I know it's been difficult, but probably in retrospect not the best time to bring a pup or be breeding lots of pups and buying lots of pups. But they are the sort of common issues we're now seeing. And so this is extreme because the problem is not only are these dogs going to be rehomed, they're going to the rehoming centres, which we know do an incredible job, but they're full. Yeah. So it's what happens after that, which is the horrifying bit. I think, I mean, we've always been, we're always full. We always have been even before lockdown, but I think what's poignant to us and what's a real sign is we're having to turn away a lot more. Mm. Now, I think when everyone gets to the point they're having to turn away, the options run out of places for them to go, and then euthanasia is always a possibility. Oh I, think, I think possibly it won't necessarily be the lockdown pups, particularly or, or definitely that are put to sleep, but certainly the dogs that were already in the rescue system, the older strays, the, the other dogs that were here before in rescue, are going to struggle because if the homes will probably take mm. the younger ones or the behavioural problem lockdown pups will certainly not fare well. So what's the story with the three you've got? Can you let Pablo's lead go? Pablo, come here. Come here. Oh, come, here. come on. I come can't on. come to you. Come on, jump come over. Pablo, Pablo, come here. Come on. Come here, go come see on. Uncle Phil. Come on. Go on. Come on. There you go. Come on. Come on. Yeah. How nice is it having dogs what, back um, in the New home, there you go. What's, um... <laughs> yes, you're beautiful. You, you, So how you. did you find... How did these come to you, then, these dogs? Because they're all looking for homes. These are dogs yeah. for homes. So, uh, Buddy here was handed into a pound at nine weeks old. He's now 13 weeks old. Yeah. For barking and... That's what they do. Nipping. So, standard stuff, really. Um, and as you can see, he's a lovely boy. Yeah, he's cool. Um, Pablo over there, um, because of... COVID and everything that's been going on, his owners couldn't financially support him. Right. And Taz um, has had a bit of unfo an unfortunate time. He's been passed through a few homes. Oh, Taz. Um, and he's actually got a medical condition. He's got really bad hips, basically. So he needs an operation. He ne he's going to need expensive. surgery. Yeah, really expensive. Um, and I think in this climate and with everything going on, He's just not a dog that mm. they could, anyone could really cope with at this time, despite being a lovely boy. I mean, he is a gorgeous dog. We've all had Thank snuggles this morning Thank and he's you. a beauty. Um, it's, not, it's not illegal to put a dog down no. you don't want anymore. No, no, no. As long as it's done humanely, as such by a vet, My you God. can. Yeah, yeah. Vets um, can refuse, but you're going to find one eventually that will yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, Dr Scott, you've been in that situation. You've had healthy dogs brought into you and asked for them to be put down. What do you do in that situation? 
Yes, well, it, it's an awful situation for, as a veterinary professional because, yes, you know, people can come in and ask for their animal, their property, to be put down. Now, as vets, um, we can suggest op um, different options, and that's exactly what I do. So often we've basically gone, look, please don't do that. I'm sure we can find a new home for your lovely animal. Why don't you sign it over to us, and then we can look to try and rehome. But not every vet can do that. We're massively under pressure at the moment um, from a work perspective and our welfare colleagues are as well. But you know what? This was always going to happen. As we've talked about the rise of the pandemic puppy, now we are seeing its fall. Mm. And so I guess we were talking here, the, one of the big reasons that people give their pets up is because of behavioural issues, because they haven't done the training, they haven't been socialised. So what can you, advice can you offer to somebody that's having those problems at home before they even consider rehoming their pet? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Holly. It's been a perfect storm where on one hand, you've got people who are maybe new to owning dogs. They have purchased dogs at a point where there's a vacuum of experience and knowledge. So you haven't got animal behaviorists, you can't go and speak to your vet, you can't go and do dog training groups, you can't go to puppy classes. And so these people and these dogs have grown up in this vacuum, this void of knowledge, experience and socialization. So if it is that you're having issues at home, now reach out to professionals. They're out there now. They're wanting to help you. People go on walks now, uh, behaviorists, um, you know, as you're walking with your dog and see the problem. They can be beamed into your house and see the issues that you're dealing with there. But you know what? Please be, you know, fair about the situation. You brought this animal into your life and now they're at adolescence. They're like a teenager. Everyone knows teenagers are difficult, but we don't turf the teenagers out. So really make an effort when it comes to your dogs or cats. You um, were talking about separation anxiety and things that you can do to prevent that from happening. Um, and that's not and it's a tough thing to do, I would imagine, if you're welcomed when you come back, is try not to make too much of a fuss. There are a number of pointers that will help as we all begin to you know, sort of come out blinking into the new world. It's true to say that uh, our pets have been our emotions. And by doing so, we've wanted them around as much as they've wanted us to be around. Mm. And we always say, like, dogs love Christmas time because we are around all the time and they're like, this is fantastic. Cats may be less appreciative. They're quite happy to have their own solitary time. But when it comes to these new puppies, you need to encourage them to realise that there are times where mum and dad owners aren't going to be around. So developing that separation at home is key. And the way that you can do that is when they're sleeping or when they're eating after a good walk, try and step away. Allow them to feel that they can be in your house alone and it's all good. Baby gates are a great way to go as well. And then, as you say, uh, Phil, when you are trying to encourage them to be used to you leaving the house Always, when you leave, don't make a big deal. And when you're returning to the house, don't give them huge amounts of attention and affection straight away. Let them calm down first and give them attention when they're calm and they're quiet, they're sleeping in a corner, and they can start realising, you know what, I can be calm and assured at home and mum and dad don't need to be at my beck and call all the time. And adopt rather than going to a breeder at this stage. Oh, please do. There's a massive wave coming our way from a welfare sector perspective. So adopt, don't shop. If you're thinking, oh, I'd really like to have a pedigree dog, maybe look to your local welfare rescue centre first, because you never know, they might have. Right, yeah. thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I've listened did to you about... Manage, I was going to say, I've how much did you about concentrate that 30% on that? percent of what was said today. He's a bit lovely, isn't he? He's a bit lovely. To be honest, they're all gorgeous. Taz, when your little one had a squeak, Taz ran straight over to check that he was all right. I mean, boy. Taz, you were like... A gorgeous little heart down there, aren't gorgeous. you? I want to hug him. He's I know, beautiful. he is. He's gorgeous. Um, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. you.